Six goals in two games against Louisville and Memphis on the road, so you got to give them a lot of credit there. Starting the game in goal for the Invaders, it'll be Jamie Swanner with a record of 15 and 4, and his goals against average entering play tonight at 3.92. And it'll be Arnie Mauser for Tampa Bay, 19 and 14, 3.67. That's the top goals against figure in the league. The Rowdies dump it down in the Invaders zone, and Swanner able to snatch that out of midair and take it away from Derek Sanderson. Sanderson, a former invader, playing for Tampa Bay now. And it is Bob Bosmeyer with the ball at the Canton red line. His pass is tipped by Sanderson, but controlled by Kia. Kia, Rudy Pikasinski, Oscar Pizzano, Bob Bosmeyer, and Tim Tima for Canton. Kareem Morabet, Rodney Marsh, Peter Rowe, Paul Rowe, and Derek Sanderson on the floor for Tampa Bay. Oscar Pizzano with the ball, working against Marsh. Right side at the red line, dumps it ahead for Kia. Kia against Paul Rowe against the right sideboards. Back it up to midfield to Pizzano. And Oscar with Marsh there. Moves to the right side. Stops shy of the red line. Now a couple of steps forward to the left. Back to the right. Around the boards outside of Peter Rowe. Wall feed for Tima. Knocked away. And controlled in the goal box by Mauser after it was deflected by Kareem Morabet. Paul Rowe takes the outlet short on the right side for Tampa Bay. The Rowdies in green and gold. The Invaders in the silver jerseys, black shorts, red and black trim. Lead ball for Solomon Hilton, former Columbus Capital player. Left side at the Invader red line. Pisano is back on D. Across the floor on the right it comes to uh, Steve Wegerly. And now back to uh, Irvine, left side at midfield. That's cleared down in the zone. Off the foot of Wim Serbeer and coming the other way is Rudy Pikasinski. Rudy with Kia, left side feed. Kia inside, Rudy give and go, he shoots, he scores! Hello. That was a tremendous play by Rudy and Kia there, Bob. Rudy gave the ball to Kia, who found Rudy right through the middle. Rudy made no mistake, he put it to... Actually, that's not Mauser in there, but he, he beat the goalie to the left side. Tim Borer is starting the game, that's interesting. 
That's not what I was told by the people from Tampa Bay. Rudy Pikasinski with a goal, his 47th of the season. The time of the goal is 1.39 of the first period. And Pikasinski has 100 career points with that goal in the league. And the assist to Kia leaves him, leaves him two points short of 200 for his career in the AISA. And they're going to give the ball to Rudy. Rudy's just had a tremendous season so far, Bob. Like you said, 47 goals on the year. See if he gives the ball to the crowd. He'll probably bring it home for little Rudy. I would think so. Yeah, the little guy's going to be able to play with that one. <laughs> He's got enough balls to play with already. They drop it back to Irvine. Wims Sir Beer back at the red line. And now Bohr. Bohr knocks it around Steve Maurer and way up in the crowd and out of play. And the Invaders will put it back in at midfield. I'm surprised a little, unless um, Mauser is starting to get tired or burned out or something, that Tampa Bay is putting Bohr in. Bohr has a record of one win and two losses. He has appeared in six games, started four, and a goals against average of 4.48. Mike Paxos with the ball, and uh, Walt Schlothauer, his mate on defense. Kondrich at midfield with Steve Maurer and Les Schirelli starting the game. And we've got a foul there. It goes against Mike Paxos, and that'll be the first one of the game on the Invaders' first foul of the game on either team. 13-01 to play in the first quarter. The Invaders lead by a score of one to nothing. Glenn Irvine dumps it down. Tim Walters back to the net on Paxos in the left corner. Outside it comes to Wegerly, who heals it back to Irvine at midfield. Irvine on the right side to Serbeer. Serbeer pushes ahead for Solomon Hilton. He taps it off the boards, but there's nobody home in the right corner for Tampa Bay. And Swanner rolls the outlet straight ahead to Schlotthauer. Artie, I thought another thing on the Invader first goal was that Canton's team speed was in evidence there as Rudy and Kia just burned the defenders back. That was two on three, and it ended up with Rudy on the goalkeeper by the time it was over. Well, I talked to Wim Sabir before the game, Bob, and he said that there's no way that the Rowdies can run with the Invaders. and They showed it there. It looks like they're going to be content to just drop back and take their opportunities as they come. They do have some senior citizens on this team, don't they? We'll have to see if the Invaders get up early what they want to do in the second half. Rodney Marsh is probably going to play more tonight than he has in a game all year. Tomo outside. Schlotthauer winds and fires just wide to the left. Scarelli feeds down. Give and go off the foot of Maurer was knocked away by Peter Rowe. And Derek Sanderson controls for the uh, Tampa Bay Rowdies. Now Marsh ahead midfield to Paul Rowe and that one's off the glass and controlled by Mike Paxos in the invader zone. He dumps it ahead for Maurer. Maurer trying to get inside Peter Rowe. They clear it to Paul Rowe, middle of the floor. And it's Sanderson right side at the Canton red line. Now back at the Tampa Bay red line to Peter Rowe. Sanderson had the ball picked away by Paxos. Off the boards, Maurer wasn't looking for the pass, but he eventually got it anyway. Maurer crosses the middle. Ball knocked away from behind by Sanderson. Paul Rowe clears to Rodney Marsh at midfield. Lead for Sanderson up the left side. He didn't get much on the shot. Kondrich, I think, got a piece of that. And it's controlled by Walt Schlotthauer in the Invaders zone. 11.39 to play in the first period. Invaders lead 1-0 on the goal by Rudy and the assist by Kia at 1.39 into the game. It's uh, Walt Schlotthauer with the ball in the Canton zone. Rodney Marsh. And they're on the line change now. Vossmeyer is back in for Canton. He's got the ball in front of the goal arc. Pisano and team of the defenders. Kia and Rudy Pikasinski are the forwards. Bossmeyer's pass is intercepted by Rodney Marsh, and he dumps it down for Sanderson, but Swanner got there first and cleared it away for Tima. Timmy dumps the ball away for Morabet. Vossmeyer again had the ball knocked away by Rodney Marsh, but he sends it airborne for Pikasinski. Rudy with Rowe. Kia with a shot blocked by Paul Rowe, taken down, and the team fouls are even at one apiece. I noticed Paul Rowe, the first shift of the game, gave Kia a couple hard shots. Continues to do that. Well, be interesting to see if he keeps doing that uh, the rest of the way. Vossmeyer will put it in play from the right side of the floor, well, about six feet outside the corner. Pisano in the middle, winds, fires, and that's knocked away by Paul Rowe, and it sails out of play. He wanted Rudy up by the left post, and Rowe able to step in front and deflect. Brothers Peter and Paul Rowe tandem on defense for Tampa Bay. We've got 10.51 to play in period one, and the Invaders lead one zip. I noticed one change in the Invaders lineup tonight, Bob. Randy Pikasinski has been replaced by Steve Maurer. Mm -hmm. Sure, it's nothing uh, with the way Randy's played. He's done a fine job since he's been in the lineup. Maurer had the two back-to-back -back goals nine seconds apart against Louisville. Rudy right side trying to get inside of Sir Beer. Backs it out of the corner, now cuts to the middle. Sir Beer with a deflection, and the ball's taken away by Walters. Rudy knocked it back, and Solomon Hilton gets it for Tampa Bay. <laughs>
Not too disappointed with only the one shot. He'll take that every quarter. Yeah, he's an old goalkeeper in hockey. He'll tell you. I'll tell you what. Uh, you take one shot on goal, you, you just accept it and go smile for a while. Bob, I'm up here. You know, the last two games the players have done the color we've lost, so I'm here to break the jinx tonight. I've got a good start after the first quarter. Well, hopefully you will break the jinx, Artie. Maybe that's why they kicked the ball at you. They wanted to knock you out and not let anything happen. <laughs> the players were saying, I, Donnie said I should have headed it back on the field. Here we go. Kia with Rudy, Vosmeyer, Tima, and Pisano for Canton. Sanderson, Morabet, both Rose and Marsh for Tampa Bay. Swanner with a ball in goal. Invaders attack from our left to our right in the second period. Vosmeyer right side at the red line there with Sanderson. Sanderson in pursuit. Took the ball away. He shoots and Swanner with a good save. Marsh on the rebound and a good play by Vosmeyer to knock it away. Followed by Morabet is blocked by Pisano and Tima clears it around the boards. That's by far the best pressure that Tampa Bay has put on. It was triggered by Derek Sanderson. Well, he took the ball away down deep in the Canton zone and actually Jamie just saved the ball with his chest mm -hmm. as Derek couldn't have been more than five, six feet away. Pisano around Morabet at the Tampa Bay red line. Left side, Sanderson on him. Morabet takes him down, no call. Here comes Sanderson. Sanderson and Morabet, it looks like they're making up their minds which one of them going to take the ball. And now Derek backs it up to Rodney Marsh. Midfield circle. This is Peter Rowe. His pass for Sanderson is blocked away by Tima. Sanderson chases it down in the right corner. Outside it comes to Paul Rowe. 13.51 to play in the first half. Sanderson to Marsh, knocked away by Tima, and here come the invaders on the counter. But Peter Rowe knocked the ball away from Tim Tima, and here comes Morabet. Morabet winds, fires, that's blocked by Vosmeyer, and Vosmeyer knocks it away from Sanderson against the boards, and Tima clears it in the goal box for Swanner. Short outlet left side to Pisano. Oscar around Marsh at the red line. Pisano to the Tampa Bay red line to Pikasinski right side of the box. Rudy turns, faces the net, puts it in the air off the side for Kondrich. It's headed out of play by Morabet. One player I think the invaders got to keep their eye on, Derek Sanderson. He's got a wrap on his leg. I don't know the extent of his injury, but he certainly looked dangerous in the early part of the game. Particularly in this quarter. He's putting the, the best defensive pressure on of anybody. Marsh, I think the only guy, the only spare guy they've got on the bench is Jay White. Is that right? And we're told that he, he's in uniform to give him 14, he, but that he cannot play. That he's physically no, he's unable I, to perform. Yeah, they've, they've only got uh, the one extra guy other than Miles. There's a shot out front, knocked away. Serbeer clears to midfield. Schlotthauer gets it back. He's pushed by Walters, but Walter able to clear it back to Swanner and then informs the referee that, hey, this guy was uh, pushing away at me, and why didn't you do something about it? Schlotthauer with the ball left side at midfield. 12.53 to play in the first half. 1-0 Canton. Paxos back at the red line against Hilton. Left side to Schlotthauer on Walters. Ahead to Steve Maurer with Glenn Irvine. Maurer taps it back to Schirelli. Lesh. Clears it inside for Maurer, posted up out front and back at the red line to Paxos. Left point, it comes to Schlotthauer and back in the midfield circle to Paxos. Right side to Kondrich. Kondrich with Wegerly, left edge of the circle to Schlotthauer. Ahead for Maurer. Maurer backs it up for Walter. 12.20 to play. And now Kondrich inside Paxos, trying to get inside Hilton in the corner. And Mike back to the net. Hilton knocked the ball away. Paxos gets it back, clears it ahead. Schirelli taps it out on the point to Kondrich. And back again to uh, Schlotthauer. Some good patience out here, Bob, by the invaders. are knocking the ball around. Something we haven't done too well in the past, but on this particular shift, they're doing it quite well. Schlotthauer ahead to Maurer. Maurer trying to get inside Sir Beer, and the ball taken away by Walters. Walters dumps it back, and it is Wegerly at the uh, red line. Right side at midfield is Sir Beer. Serbira ahead to Solomon Hilton. Ball knocked away. Paxos clears it out, and here is Les Scarelli at the red line. Invaders attack three on three. Scarelli with Condrich to his right, and Les put it in the stage. Goal kick for Tampa Bay. Bob, I think we should have a helmet night for the people there behind the goal. <laughs> that wouldn't be a bad idea. I've seen some people really get drilled this year. 
Like they should warn him or something. That's dangerous up there with the way some of these guys can shoot. Yeah, and we always tell you, if you're, especially if you're in the ends, keep your eye on the ball. Well, in practice, when I see Walter Schlotthauer wind up for a shot, I just duck. That's a sound uh, uh, practice, I would think. A lot of goalkeepers would probably like to do that in camp. 11.26 to play in the first half. Long lead ball. Moribet lost it off his heel. Vosmeyer controls in the invader zone. Ahead to Pisano. Pisano working on Marsh. Moves around Marsh. And Oscar feeds right side to Tima. Tima put it in the stage. He wanted to pass off the glass for Rudy and just missed it by about a foot, foot and a half. 11-12 to play in the second quarter. And... Uh, the Invaders offense may be just a, a, a hair off a time or two tonight, but uh, we'll see if they can get things clicking. Another another final. Memphis is, uh, no, Milwaukee's defeated Memphis 7-2, to Bob. We don't want to tell the Rowdies that is, might inspire them a little bit. Milwaukee 7, Memphis 2. It's a good win for J.D. Sure is. Sanderson had the ball picked away. Kia knocked it away from Marsh. Vossmeyer clears, and he is hauled down. And which way the foul goes, a push on, on Canton. That's the first foul of the period. Comes with 10.53 to go. The score is 1-0 Invaders. Tough loss for the Buckeyes earlier today as Georgetown knocked off Ohio State 82-79. Bucks had a 15-point lead in that game and unable to uh, hang on. Invaders lead 1-0. Ball ahead, intercepted. Here comes Pikasinski. Kia right side. He shoots, blocked by Paul Rowe. And Marsh has it right side at midfield. Marsh pushes it ahead. Bad pass taken away by Pisano. Pisano, ball deflected by Moribet. And uh, Oscar with a sliding play to knock it away from him. Here comes Vosmeyer the other way for Canton. Pisano still down, getting up slowly. And ahead to Pikasinski. Rudy trying to get inside Peter Rowe. And Peter Rowe, I think, is going to get called on the trip. And he is. Just before that, Bob, Kia had a good chance from the left side. I think he'd rather, he'd like to have that one back. Rudy gave him the ball, and his touch just got away from him a little bit there. Second foul on Tampa Bay in the period. Vosmeyer will put it in play, left side of the box. Rudy in front of the box, and then Kia a little bit behind him. Now Kia will move in front. Rudy outside the corner. Kia whiffed on the shot, and Sanderson passes it over. Cleared out. That's more a bit rather, but it's out to midfield, and Pisano has it there. I think Oscar was slow getting up. He may have landed on that hand that he injured when he went down, and I bet that could sting because he's got some stitches and the one finger broken there. And team is pass intercepted by Marsh. Tampa Bay comes three on three. Left side shot, no. Marsh with a follow. Swanner with a save. And here comes Condrich the other way. They come three on two, right side to Kia. Kia to Kondrich. He shoots. It's blocked by Serbeer. And uh, Wegerly has it. Knocked away by Rudy. Kia with a shot. Knocked outside. He follows again. It's in the stage. Boy, good end-to-end -end action there, Bob. Good shot by Rodney Marsh at one end. Jamie made the save. And on the transition, we came down the other way and had a couple good chances. Rodney can still zing it, can't he? Yeah, he's a great player. And... You know, you might lose some of the speed as you get older, but you certainly don't lose the technique. 9.40 to go in the first half. Canton won, Tampa Bay nothing. We may have to tell you in a little bit about Wim Serbeer, uh escapades and their overtime loss to Memphis. Kind of a funny story. I'm sure that's not if you're from Tampa Bay. We may get to that at halftime. It's a good thing the coach did this, because if anybody else did, they'd have killed it. 9.40 to play. Sir Beer's got the ball now in the box for Bohr. Scarelli with him. Bohr will pick it up. Started to throw right. Now dumps it out left side at midfield. Weggerly drops it back to Irvine at the Tampa Bay red line. Way up in the air. Swanner heads that in the corner. Walters has it there. Walters, ball picked away by Scarelli. Hilton tried to knock it away, but Schlotthauer clears it in the box for Jamie. Ahead for Maurer. Maurer working on Irvine on the right side. And it took a funny hop off the boards. Maurer has to back it up to Kondrich. Kondrich moving around Wegerly stops, cuts back to the middle of the floor. Paxos, his shot, and that is controlled by Bohr. He looked a little bit shaky on that. It's a weak shot, but kind of took a funny bounce. Uh, it's the other way around. Memphis beat Milwaukee 7-2, Artie. Well, it wasn't a good game for J.D. then. No. And there's a ball knocked away by... Uh, 
Sanderson. Derek has it at the Tampa Bay red line up the left side of the floor. They better hustle back on D. He shoots, kicks, saving a beauty by Jamie Swanner. And the ball knocked away from Walters. And Paxos and Sanderson, or rather Maurer and Sanderson in a race. Maurer knocked the ball away from two guys, but Marsh ends up with it. Maurer on him, knocks it away from him. And Bohr dumps it out of play. And boy, if that isn't delay of game, they better never call it the rest of the year. Well, like you said, the last five, six games, they really haven't been calling too much of that, Bob. You know, sometimes you wonder with the goalkeepers whether they're doing it intentionally or not. It's I've got to wonder at the league office. I really believe they've told them not to call it. You're probably right about that, Bob. Because, I mean, if that isn't delay, they better never call that the rest of the year in this building. 8.22 to play. Borum it didn't even make an effort to even look like, oops, I put that out of play. I mean, there's a shot by Schlotthauer wide, and that's tipped over the glass and out of play by Moribet. Now 8.17 to play in the period. Scarelli, or rather Condrich, dishes back to uh, Paxos, Schlotthauer to Lesh. Scarelli left side, backs it away from Sanderson, midfield to Schlotthauer. Walter ahead for Maurer, Maurer against Paul Rowe. Stevie back to the net, gets inside row, trying to feed inside. Condra shoots and scores! Now, I don't know if Lesh deflected that or if it hit Burr. It looked like Scarelli tipped it in. I think so. Tomo took the initial shot after a nice feed from Stevie Maurer. And I think Lesh was there to tip it in with the right foot. I think the ball might have been going in the goal anyway. Nonetheless, it was a nice shot by Tomo. He had the goalie beaten. Time of the goal, 6.59 for Scarelli, his 15th goal of the year. And for Tomo, that would be assist number six. Yep, they give the goal to Schirelli. Condrich will get the assist in the Invaders' lead, two to nothing. I think uh, Bohr would have had trouble handling the initial shot, but Les made sure. And Tampa Bay Rowe just sent that one over everything and out of play. That'll be a goal kick for Canton. There's a timeout on the field, 7.54 to play in the first half. Canton two, Tampa Bay nothing. 7.54 to play in the first half. The Invaders lead 2-0 on goals by Rudy Pikasinski and Lesh Gorelli. What Wim Sabir talked about before the game, Bob, he said that they couldn't fall too far behind. Right now it's 2-0 with just about eight minutes left in the half. And if the Invaders get one or two more here, it could be a, a real big task in the second half for them. You've been there and know of what has happened to this team in Tampa Bay. If they got a chance to blow this one away, would they show any mercy? I don't think so. No, I don't think we want to show any mercy. No. It's one thing we've done too often this year and let teams back in it. Bossmeyer tries to clear to Kia, but Peter Rowe heads that back to Sanderson at midfield. Sanderson in the Canton zone. Marsh wants it outside on the left. He's got it. He moves on Pisano. Moves again. Oscar sliding play to take it right away from him. And here comes Rudy Pikasinski. Back at the red line, it's uh, Timmy Tima with it. And left side, right side at midfield to Vossmeyer. Vossmeyer with Marsh. Ahead to Rudy, and he lets it go. And it's controlled by Bohr in the goal box for Tampa Bay. Now Paul Rowe. Rowe ahead to Moribet. Moribet and Irvine coming here in the deal that sent Mike Fall back to Louisville. And Pisano has it in the invader zone. Seven minutes to go in the first half. Team a left side midfield. Ahead for Pikasinski. Knocked away by Paul Rowe. But Bossmeyer has it in midfield for the invaders. Right side at the Tampa Bay red line near Rudy Pikasinski. And back to Vossmeyer. Vossmeyer ahead to Kia. Kia on the run, retreating at midfield. Dishes back in the zone for Canton, and Swanner there with it. Swanner sends it out, and that falls just shy of the red line. Tima trying to get inside Morabet. He's pushed against the boards, and that'll be an obstruction call on Kareem Morabet. They try to center, and that's dumped out of play, and now they are going to give two minutes on Peter Rowe for delay. Well, to me... Timmy went to put the ball in play quickly there. He did so. I thought that the referee was called to halt play. It looks like they might give him two more minutes. Yeah, they did. They just did. And that's just plain, you know, they're going to give him two more. That could be four minutes. Time of the penalty will be 8.28 if you're scoring with us at home. It'll be the first power play for the Invaders tonight. I don't know what he's going to call the first penalty, Bob. It couldn't have been. Could be delay. Delay a game. Invaders, 44 of 111 on the power play, 40% this year. 
Tampa Bay's penalty killer, 74%, 23 goals allowed in 89 attempts. They did give the blue, and then they gave Rowe a yellow card. That should be four minutes. Probably dissent, and uh, yep, four is up on the board. And pro probably delay of game and dissent. Well, this is a big opportunity now for the invaders, Bob. If we can push one over here, we'll be sitting pretty before halftime. They sure will be. Power play unit, Rudy Pikasinski, Kia, Pisano, Bosmeyer, and Schlotthauer. You mentioned, Bob, a 40% ratio, a 40% ratio on the power play. That's tops in the league. Very good power play. One of the reasons we've been so successful in the past. They got one for unsportsmanlike conduct, one for dissent. Vosmeyer, midfield. See, they went. To, they, were, they wanted to get the ball back to put it in play, and he kicked it out. That was the call. 3.46 in the double penalty. Pisano, left side to Schlotthauer. Schlotthauer backs it up to Vosmeyer. Left edge of the midfield circle. 6.08 to play in the period. Pisano, Rudy, to Kia in the corner. Centers. Rudy put it in the air. Smiler by Schlotthauer. Scores! Well, Kia took the initial shot, Bob. Rudy deflected it over the top of the board, hit the crossbar, came right back out to Waltz, and he put it in with the right foot from just about three yards out. Walt Schlotthauer picks up his 14th goal of the year. Rudy Pikasinski gets his 25th assist. Time of the goal, 8.59. And the Invaders lead three to nothing. Now, on the double penalty, he should get two more minutes. They're discussing it right there now. There should be two more minutes put up there, and, or are they going to let him out? Tampa Bay's got five players on the field. That's what the Invaders are asking, and uh, apparently not. My impression that under that double penalty situation that uh, they put the other two back, but that's not what they did. In any event, it's 3-0. 5.53 to play. Kia dumps it in. Vosmeyer clears it in the box. Knocked away. Hilton shot. Saved by Swanner. Oh, my. Jamie down on the ground, able to grab it with the right hand, left hand, and hang on. Solomon tried to side foot that one. He probably should have just let it go. Vosmeyer and Rudy, two on two. Rudy right side. Kicks it. Scores! Four nothing. Oh, Rudy's Jamie. second goal of the night. Jamie gave the ball to Bob Vossmeyer right across midfield. Four just to, down to the left side. 9.25 the time of that goal. Rudy's 48th of the year. Vossmeyer picks up his second assist since joining the Invaders. Tampa Bay has called timeout to try to sort something out here. 5.35 to play in the second quarter. The Invaders lead four to nothing. No, he said that if they did get too far behind it, that forget it was his words. And How far is too far? Four goals is pretty far. Irvine sends it long, and Swanner will catch that on the fly in the goal box. Outlet right, left, right side midfield for Scarelli. Taps it back to Paxos, and now in the goal box is Swanner. Left side to Schlotthauer, back to Jamie. 5.17 to play in the first half, 4-0 Canton. Swanner out near the red line, sends it ahead. It's beyond Paxos, dumped back by Weggerly. Here comes Hilton up the left side. Hilton to Walters, picked up by Schlotthauer. Now Weggerly with Maurer all over him. Sir Beer has it at midfield for Tampa Bay. Hilton tapped it back, almost got that ball a little too far away from him, but Sir Beer has it now, and Irvine clears. Walters with it in the right corner. Schlotthauer on him on D. Dumps it back out to midfield. Sir Beer puts it up in the air for Irvine, left side. He lets it go, and it's blocked out of play by Kondrich. Irvine lets one go from that close, and it hits you in the side. That one will hurt tomorrow for Tomo, I would think. I think maybe next year, Bob, they might have to think about putting in, like in the softball or baseball in the Little Leagues, they have the 10-run rule after five innings. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It's only 4 nothing, Art. We'll see what happens here. 4.43 to play. Marsh will put it in. And now Marsh will step away. 
says something to the referee Popovich. Now he taps it out to Peter Rowe. Rowe puts it over the head of Sanderson. Morabed in the corner, can't control. Runs into Maurer, but Maurer has the ball. Here they come, four on two if they hurry. Maurer to Scarelli on the right side. Lesh to Maurer out front. He fires, it's wide. Scarelli with a follow, and it's through the middle, and Paxos has it there. 4.22 to play. Paxos winds, fires, no. Maurer, rebound, comes out behind him, and it's cleared out to Sanderson. Sanderson across the red line, across midfield. Canton red line to Marsh. Marsh there with Kondrich. And Schirelli to double team. Now Schlothauer over on him. Ahead to Sanderson. That ball's knocked away by Maurer. And Paxos dumps it in the box for Swanner. Jamie Long leads Schirelli on the run in the Tampa Bay zone. Peter Rowe runs him down from behind and dumps it in the box for Bohr. Outlet Sanderson. Right back to Paul Rowe in front of the goal box for Tampa Bay. And Rodney Marsh left side at midfield. Marsh. Dishes back. Paul Rowe with it. Ahead midfield for Sanderson. Sanderson with Pisano on D. They run down into the left corner. Sanderson back to the net there. Comes outside with it to Marsh in the goal box. Swanner will clear that around Sanderson. Kondrich off the sideboards, and Tima comes out with it. Tima gets around more a bit. Ahead to Maurer up the right side. Paul Rowe hustles back on D. Maurer centers for Schirelli, and it's through Lesh. And Lesh and Sanderson in a race with it at the red line. And Derek stops and backs it up to Peter Rowe. 3.14 to play in the second quarter. Invaders lead 4-0. Borer with the ball in the goal box for Tampa Bay. Picks it up. Outlet right side midfield to Rowe. Paul Rowe pushes ahead. Walters has to wait on it in the Canton zone. Tima is back on D. Inside for Wegerly. Back out to Walters. Walters left side. Maurer on D. Crosses and Wegerly comes outside out front. Shot by Rowe. Wide and knocked out of play by Pisano with 2.50 to go in the first half. Tampa Bay, I think, is trying to put a little more heat on, but... Uh, well, I think they need to get one here, Bob, before the end of the half. Psychologically, it might help them a little bit if they could get one here, but... Jamie hasn't been tested except for one time by Derek, and... He was up to that one. Marsh centers, and there's nobody home for Tampa Bay. I can't believe nobody's closer to the net than that, and Tima able to clear it out. Serbeer with it, the Tampa Bay red line, right side to Wegerly at midfield. And that's going to be intercepted by Pikasinski. Here comes Tim Tima, pushes it up the right side for Kia. And Bohr out of the net to knock that over the glass and out of play. Good thing Bohr went out to help out his defender because uh, I believe Serbeer was have all he's going to handle with Kia down there. Well, like you said, Bob, it does look like Tampa's trying to put a little bit more pressure on. That does leave him susceptible to the quick counterattacks, and we almost had one there. Quick is the key word there because it's not a part of many of the vocabularies on this Tampa Bay team. They are not a quick, a quick club with a couple of exceptions. Vossmeyer dumps it in. Irvine clears it back out. It's over the head of Pisano. He flags it down, uh, rather Swanner does in the Canton zone, taps it ahead to Oscar. Ahead midfield for Vossmeyer, and that ball is intercepted by Irvine. Back in the box for Bohr. Outlet left side, Serbeer. 2.16 to go in the half. 4 0 Invaders. Serbeer. Backs it up to uh, Bohr. He's out of the net. Clears it out, and that one, that one is in the hallway behind the invader bench. So Canton will kick it in. Left side at midfield. 2.07 to go in the first half. The invaders having things their way so far. Mossmeyer to put it in play for Canton. Taps it back to Tima. Airborne in the left corner for Pikasinski against Serbeer. Hilton, the double team, taps it outside to Kia. Back to Vosmeyer. Now Kia on the feet in the corner. Kia trying to get inside. Irvine does, but Hilton over to help out. Hilton and Kia fight forward in the corner. Rudy to double team. Hilton, ball slid, and he got around Tima, and Hilton clears up the right side. Across midfield, Timmy hustles back on D. Timmy sliding play to knock it free, but Irvine got it back for Tampa Bay. Right side, Hilton. That one's in the cheap seats. Tell you what, Bob, that time Solomon Hilton stole the ball down deep in his own zone. Looked like they had a break two on two, but like you said before, the team speed of the invaders, Tim Tima, Rudy, they all got back on defense and changed a two on two into a two on four, and that's a tough uh, when you're going two against four to score. Yeah, again, I think the biggest illustration of the speed was on that first goal. Rudy and Kia are two on three, and by the time they got done, Rudy was alone on the goalkeeper. And it was just, they just blew right by the line of defense. 
there's and really didn't make any deft moves to do it. It was just sheer speed. Actually, there's not many guys in the league that are going to stay with those two guys. That's true. But from where they started, they was two on three at the red line, and by the time they got to the box, <laughs> they had gotten around them. It's usually going to take them the length of the floor or so. Swanner dumps it ahead for Steve Maurer outside Condrich at the Tampa Bay red line, minute 16 in the period. Right side, Scarelli back on the point to Paxos. Edge of the midfield circle, it comes to Schlotthauer, and now Paxos again. And they'll spread him out a little bit here. Ahead to Maurer. Maurer knocks the ball away from Marsh. That sails back in the Canton zone. It'll stay in play. Swanner waits for it there. 57 seconds to go in the half. Invaders looking to try to pile on a fifth one here if they can get it. You know, right Bob, side, Tampa Bay red line to Condrich. Go ahead. The thing that's so scary about our team, you look at Rudy, you look at Key, and we talk about team speed. And then you look down on the bench, and you've got Steve Frick and Randy Pikasinski waiting there. And, I mean, these guys are just as fast. Talk about a couple of thoroughbreds. Those guys can run. Paxos, right side at midfield, 33 seconds in the period. Ahead it comes to Condrich. Condrich centers for Scarelli. Lash back to Tomo, give and go. Outside, Paxos missed. Maurer will try to get it outside. He shoots, saved by Borg. Condrich on the rebound. That's blocked by Rowe. Condrich over to Paxos, 19 seconds in the period. Paxos dumps it in. Maurer trying to get inside more. Abed does. He shoots. Oh, and that one leveled Bohr right into the chest, and it knocked him to the ground with seven seconds. And Bohr, the clock stopped. It's still running. Now they'll stop it with three seconds. Bohr caught that ball right in the chest, and it was like he was trying to catch a freight train. It just knocked him right down. I was just about to say before he got hit that I really feel sorry for Tim Bohr with the amount of pressure the invaders are supplying. It's, he's almost been abandoned back there, and Mike Paxo Ooh. was right in front, had a, a chance. He just missed the ball, went right to Steve Maurer, and Bohr made a good save on him, but he hasn't been getting much help back there so far, Bob. Boy, the tummy isn't going to feel good after that. Three seconds left. <laughs> Drop ball in front of the arc. Paul Rowe and Scarelli will face off for this. It bounces out to midfield, and that'll be the end of the quarter. But the Invaders get three unanswered goals in the second period, and in halftime, it's the Canton Invaders four, and the Tampa Bay Rowdies nothing. And we would like to extend congratulations to Tim Tima, who has been named the Invader Fan Club's Player of the Month. For February, the award just handed out to Timmy at halftime. Harvey Sr. gets a hello from Harvey Jr. who's here at the game tonight. Wish you could be here, Harv, but we'll see you hopefully next week. Next home game, final home game of the regular season, 8.05 next Saturday. Big game against the Chicago Shockers. Underway in the third quarter, Tampa Bay with a kickoff. Dumped down in the invader zone. Vossmeyer deflects to Rudy and back to Vossmeyer. And the invaders will bring it out. Oscar Pisano clears. Left side is Vossmeyer. Sanderson with him. Now Pisano, right edge of the midfield circle. Ahead to Pikasinski. Rudy in the Tampa Bay zone. Taps it back off the boards on the side to Pisano. Pisano down in the corner. Vossmeyer for Rudy. Rudy had it knocked away by Paul Rowe, but Pisano's got it back at midfield. Just underway in the second half. Invaders lead 4-0. Pisano double teamed by Marsh and Sanderson. And Sanderson comes away with the ball for Tampa Bay. Right side to Morabet at the Canton Red Line. Morabet with Tima back on D. Now Kia out to help. Paul Rowe has it at midfield. In the air for Sanderson. That's headed away by Vossmeyer. And Kia controls for the Invaders. Backs it away from Sanderson. And the Rowdy's backing up on D. Artie, I got to wonder how long they can continue to play this backup game. I mean, they're down four goals. Uh, unless their only objective is to get out of here without getting embarrassed too badly. Bohr clears, but that's going to be, well, it was almost intercepted by Vossmeyer, but eventually knocked back. But Rudy took it away from Morabet, looking for Kia out front, knocked away by Bohr, and he grabs it and holds on. Mm. I'm sure Rudy would have liked to have that pass back. He made a great move to get around uh, Peter Rowe. He had Kia in front, but he just failed to get it there. Peter Rowe up against the sideboards. Rudy all over him on D. Drops it in the goal box. bohr has got a problem there with Kia. Clears out to Solomon Hilton at midfield. And we've got a whistle away from the ball and a two-minute card coming out. There are six Tampa Bay Rowdies out there, and none of them is a goalkeeper. And uh, consequently, Tampa Bay is going to go a man down. 
Well, that's not the way they wanted to start the second half, I'm no. sure. <laughs> I'm not sure who the guy was that wasn't supposed to be there, but they're going to have a penalty for too many men on the field. Well, both coaches are on the bench, so... Look, even Rose laughing down there. Look at him. <laughs> Oh, jeez. <laughs> Nothing's going right for him, is it? I'm sure they're getting a little discouraged at this point. 141 of the third, they'll get the bench penalty for too many men on the field. When it rains, it pours, Bob. Second power play for Canton on the night. They scored on the first one. Schlotthauer, left side at the red line. <laughs> Back to Vossmeyer. Now Pisano on the right point. Rudy posted up, clears for Walter. He shoots, it's blocked. The rebound comes out behind, Pisano, behind Walter, who had fallen down. But Rudy taps it out to Vosmeyer. Left side to Schlotthauer, back to Vosmeyer. Minute 40 in the penalty. Right side to Pisano. Pisano to Rudy. He can't get the shot away. Schlotthauer gets it back. Outside to Vosmeyer. 12.50 in the period, minute 30 in the penalty. Right side to Oscar. Pisano into Pikasinski. Rudy back outside to Pisano. Left side of the floor to Schlotthauer. Walter in the middle. It comes to Vosmeyer. Right side Pisano in the corner. Kia back outside to Vosmeyer. Minute 14 in the penalty. Vosmeyer to Rudy. Heads it over wide left. That's going to be cleared out to midfield by Rowe. And uh, chased down there by Bob Vosmeyer. One minute left in the penalty. Pisano right side in the corner to Kia to Rudy back outside and Pisano cuts in he shoots it's blocked by Peter Rowe and Walters has it there for Tampa Bay. Walters backs it up to Rowe and they'll choose some time here. Rowe with Pikasinski on D spins back Rudy and they got a problem there as Kia comes in to help out. Rowe clears out Walters can't get it and now he sends it up in the stage and it'll be a goal kick Canton with 36 seconds left in the Tampa Bay penalty. Notice Oscar was talking to Rudy there just before. I think that he's looking for Bobby to play the ball into Rudy at the top of the box, and then he can knock it over to Oscar on the right side. I think Oscar's looking for that. Have to see if they can set it up here. 4 nothing Invaders. We played a uh, little more than three minutes of the second half. No scoring in this period yet. The Invaders are on the power play for 36 more seconds. Vosmeyer comes out across the Canton red line. The Tampa Bay man down team waiting in the zone. Right side to Kia on the point. Pisano back to Kia in the corner to Pikasinski. Ball knocked away by Paul Rowe. Oscar got it back. Tried to dump it in. The second time he shoots. Good save by Bohr to knock that one free. 19 seconds in the penalty. Wegerly has it at midfield for Tampa Bay across to Glenn Irvine. Irvine clears ahead to Walters. Walters with Bosmeyer knocks it away to Kia. 10 seconds in the penalty. Kia on the attack. He feeds to Pikasinski. Rudy scores! Well, Kia made a fine play there, Bob. He came down the middle of the floor, found Rudy on the right side. Rudy had a little bit of trouble controlling the ball, flipped it up, put it over the top of four, and that's the hat trick for Rudy Pikasinski. Time of the goal is 11, is 3.38 of the period. Rudy Pikasinski with his third goal and fourth point of the night, and Kia picks up his second assist, and the Invaders lead 5-0, and they are two for two on the power play. And here come the hats, Bob. There must be 10. Here they come, 10, 12 hats out there. Rudy's already got about 20 of them in his closet. I don't know what he's going to do with all those. He will never get a wet head when it rains. He has plenty of headgear to wear. Rudy Pikasinski does. Namovsky puts one on, on the bench, a straw hat over there. 5 nothing invaders. And Tampa Bay is... Just continuing to have their problems. They have all they can handle in this playoff race, too, because they have to face Memphis twice more before the season's over, and they only lead by a half game. Memphis could move ahead if this will move ahead, if this score holds up. Paxos in a fight with Sanderson with it, dumps it back. Swanner comes out, taps the ball ahead for Condrich. Condrich against Moore, but on the right side of the floor. 11 minutes to play in the third quarter. Walt Schlotthauer dumps it ahead for Scarelli. Lesh against Irvine. Back to Schlotthauer. Walter, midfield circle to Paxos. And back in the goal box, Swanner. Swanner puts it in the air for Scarelli. Lesh trying to work on Irvine. Up against the boards. And taps it back off the sideboards for Schlotthauer. Right side at midfield for Paxos. Paxi dumps it ahead for Maurer. Maurer trying to get inside Serpier. 
In the left corner, Maurer turned. Sabir knocked it right into Hilton. Maurer got it back and hit somebody in the hand. Oh, it's it's going to be a dangerous play against Tampa Bay, I believe, on Irvine. And that's the first foul of the second half on either club. Big Steve Maurer showing a lot of fight out there. We mentioned it before. He's played well. He's yet to score, but hopefully he can get one here. Condridge, Paxos, shot, score! That'll go to Mike Paxos. It hit Burr, it hit Serbeer, it might have hit Irvine, and it ended up in the back of the net. Six-nothing invaders. Tom Condridge off the free kick, down deep in the zone, just laid it back to Mike. Mike hit the shot first time, and like you said, Bob, it hit, it, hit about three or four players in there, all defenders, and it trickled behind Bohr. And let's say that's for Mike is uh, sixth goal. goal of the year. And Condridge, his second assist of the night, and he's got seven on the season. The time of the goal, 4.36. And the Canton Invaders lead 6-0. And there are a lot of heads pointing downward in green jerseys right now from Tampa Bay. Wegerly with the ball left side off the kickoff for the Rowdies. Ahead to Irvine. Irvine in the Canton zone. Maurer with him step for step in the corner. Maurer picked him clean. Here we come the other way. Maurer ahead to Scarelli. Lesh through the midfield circle. Irvine comes up on him. Leshy backs it up. Left side to Condrich. 10.05 to play in the third period. Right edge of the circle, Schlotthauer. Ahead to Maurer in the corner, back to the net on Serbier. Maurer dumps it outside to Schlotthauer. Schlotthauer back to Maurer again. Maurer back to Walter. This game is on radio back to Tampa Bay, too. The folks down there can't be too pleased with what they're hearing about. Schlotthauer, midfield circle. Ahead to Scarelli. Goes around him. Solomon Hilton back in the corner. Condrich and Scarelli double team. Condrich with a steal. Centers through the box. It hits Maurer in the back of the heel. Tomo gets it back to Paxos. Paxi takes it down in the corner. Wall feed. Oh, he is hammered by Irvine, and Irvine's going to get two. Well, that might have been a little frustration on Glenn's part there, Bobby. He still hasn't gotten up. Mike Paxos still down. Mike went around the boards on the left side. He was vulnerable because he was outstretched, kicking the ball off the boards, and Glenn just hammered him into the boards. Actually, Glenn, he should have probably gotten a penalty just before that as he gave one of the other players a rough ride along the boards. Irvine will get two minutes, and I'll be stunned if it's for anything other than boarding. And the Invaders will go on the power play for the third time tonight. They are two for two with a man advantage, and they lead the game six to nothing. It is boarding, 5.31 the time of the penalty. Mike Paxos is still down on the field. And now he's being assisted up. Looks like he's just a little groggy. Well, he really took a wicked lick. He's a big, tough kid, though. He's, it's going to take a lot to shake him up. <laughs> Looks to be all right. A little groggy, but I, it doesn't appear to be anything serious. And the power play unit back out there. Wegerly, Walters, and Peter and Paul Rowe, the penalty killers for Tampa Bay. Rudy Pikasinski, Kia, Walt Schlotthauer, Bob Vosmeyer, and Oscar Pisano. The power play unit for the Invaders. They have clicked twice tonight. And the Invaders lead the game 6 to nothing with 9.29 to play in the third quarter. Outside Schlotthauer, left point. We're back underway. Bosmeyer, middle of the floor, feeds from the right point to Pisano. In the corner to Kia, right back to Oscar. And Oscar moves to the left, now back to Kia. Kia centers, and he just missed Walter in the far post. Bosmeyer back to Schlotthauer, up in the air, and Pisano chases that down at midfield. A minute 40 left in the penalty as Oscar comes back across the red line. Oscar moves in, close. He feeds, that ball is knocked away. He wanted Walter again. Paul Rowe deflected, and Rowe will clear it out. Backs it up to Walters. In the box, it's Peter Rowe, and Rowe has a problem with Slothauer. Back to Bohr. Back to Rowe. Lock, no ball knocked away by Kia, but Rowe gets it back against the left boards. Dumps it out to midfield, and Vosmeyer chases it down in the Canton end. A minute 12 left in the penalty, 8.41 in the period. Invaders six, Tampa Bay nothing. Vosmeyer across the Rowdies' red line, right side feed to Pisano. Oscar putting the move on Walters. Now he's chased back to midfield, pushes it ahead for Kia. Kia on the run, feeds to Pikasinski. Ball knocked away by Paul Rowe. Vosmeyer flags that one down in the midfield circle. 51 seconds left in the penalty. Right side to Pisano. Oscar feeds to Kia in the corner. 
Kia back to Pisano again. Oscar in the air, headed away by Wegerly. Oscar gets it back. He fires wide. Slothauer on the follow to Rudy. Back to Kia. He scores! Well, great passing play there, Bob. Watch Slothauer played the ball in the center to Rudy. Rudy just power play tonight, Bob. Time of the goal, 6.59. And that is Kia's 200th point. He has two assists in that goal tonight, and he's going to get a souvenir soccer ball as well. One up. High five with Pikasinski. Rudy has five points tonight. Valencia is going to have some work to do to catch him in the scoring race when he gets done. Seven nothing invaders with 8.01 to play in the period. I noticed just before that goal, Bob Koskouras stretching out behind the bench. Looks like he should get some time out there tonight. Some of the other players might get some minutes. Maybe we can have some fun the rest of the way. Sir Beer dumps it in in the Canton zone. Uh, it's back to Irvine at midfield. Irvine puts it in the air. It's headed back by Pisano. Kia with the ball for Canton drops it back to Tim Tima. Now Oscar left side at midfield. 7-0 invaders. Oscar puts it in the air for Kia. Kia with Serbier in the corner. Wants to center. Tima shoots. Saved by Bohr. Up in the air centers. Tima on the rebound. Knocked away by Irvine. And Rudy gets it back off the boards. Morabet for Tampa Bay. Fights along the boards with Pikasinski. Morabet wanted to dump it back. Sliding play by Kia. But Morabet reverses his field. Goes the other way. And now dumps it back to Wim Serbier. 7-15. We haven't told you that story about Serbier against Memphis yet. We'll get to that eventually. Irvine starts to lead the booze against him. Schlotthauer puts it in the air. Irvine heads it back. And Serbier dumps it back through the box. Irvine has it there. Irvine clears it out to midfield. And that's a three-line violation on Tampa Bay. Now, here's the story. They're, they're, it's 3-3. Three, three. They're in double overtime in the game against Memphis. Wim Serbier, the coach, is out on the field for Tampa Bay. They're in the middle of a line change. He wants to finish the line change. Serbier's the last guy back with the ball. He just steps on the bench, leaves the ball sitting there, and there's nobody there for Tampa Bay back. There's a shot knocked away, and we'll finish it up. Nobody back for Tampa Bay. Greg Willen from Memphis takes the ball, goes down the field, and scores, and they win in double overtime. If anybody else does that, Sir Bear's probably going to kill him. I don't, I don't think he's got to worry about doing that tonight. No. Marsh had the ball taken away by Maurer at midfield. Invaders on the attack. Maurer winds to Scarelli. Just missed him. Here comes Pisano after the follow. Oscar Scarelli back to Oscar. He hit the post. And Sanderson comes the other way. Sanderson right side at midfield to Rodney Marsh. Marsh backs it up. Wim Serbier with it there. Serbier to Irvine. 6-12 to play in the third quarter. 7-0 Canton. Irvine dishes back to Paul Rowe. Rowe with defense from Maurer, sends it long. That's going to be intercepted by Pisano. Pisano with Marsh at midfield, and Marsh clears by. Oscar drops it over to Kondrich. Tomo near the midfield circle. 5.54 to go in the third quarter. Kondrich stops the Tampa Bay red line. Walters with him there. Left side, Schlotthauer. Ball knocked away from him by Rowe, and Walter will get two minutes as he puts Rowe into the boards. That looked kind of like a makeup call there for the one that they gave to Irvine. That wasn't, wasn't as flagrant, but no. it's the first penalty on the invaders in the game, so we can't kick much with a 7-0 lead. 9-18 will be the time of that penalty in the third quarter. Bob, is this starting to remind you of the Mike Tyson, Bone Crusher Smith fight? <laughs> Could be. Invaders on the year with the man down. 73% penalty killing, 30 goals allowed in 110 man down situations. Tampa Bay is on the power play for the first time tonight. They have connected on 34% of their power play situations this year. 27 out of 79. Time out on the field. We'll take a break with a score. The Invaders 7, Tampa Bay. The team for Tampa Bay, Rodney Marsh, Tim Walters, Steve Wegerly, Glenn Irvine, and Peter Rowe. First time Tampa Bay has been on the man advantage tonight. The Invaders are 3 for 3 with a power play this evening. Steve Wegerly, right side, Canton red line, feeds to Irvine. Irvine on the point, backs it up to Rowe. Row on the right side to Wegerly. Down in the corner. Walters is there. Centers almost knocked away. Row with a shot. Good save by Swanner to get the left hand on the ball. Knocks it in the corner. Wegerly on the point. 
Right side it comes. Walters with a shot through the box. I think Tima got a piece of that. And then Irvine put it in the stage with a minute 33 left in the penalty. The crowd really enjoying that one. Glenn Irvine who slammed Mike Paxson into the boards earlier. The crowd's been on him ever since and he just put that one up into the bleachers and they got a, quite a kick out of that. Goal kick for the Invaders. 5-14 left to play in the period. And Canton pounding the Tampa Bay Rowdies 7-0. Tima clears it out midfield. Steve Frick is back there. Frick lets Wegerly clear by as he tapped the ball up in the air. Fricky double teamed on the boards. Got around the both of them and drops it back for uh, Condridge. Right side midfield for Tima. His ball for Frick is intercepted by Wegerly. Wegerly just lost the ball. Frick comes the other way with Rudy. He shoots. Blocked out of play by Irvine. With a minute 11 left in the penalty, Wegerly came tearing up the floor and he forgot something behind. The ball was still sitting there. Some fine work there by Steve Frick. It's his first shift out there tonight. And uh, he held the ball well there for about 15 seconds. That's Fricky's specialty, this man down. Sure is. Excellent ball handling skills, and he can run until the sheep come home. They dump it in the goal box. Rowe clears it in there for Borer. Outlet Marsh, right side at midfield. Condridge is with him on D. He pushes it ahead for Walters. Walters with Tima up against the boards. They fight for it there. And the ball deflected by Frick and controlled by Condridge. Dumps it in the goal box for Jamie Swanner. He picks it up there. Walters, I think, shaved his beard since the All-Star game, didn't he? That's why I'm having trouble spotting him tonight. Off the chest of Frick, who was pushed by Rowe, no call. Here comes Irvine. We've had only one foul in this period. 4.17 to play. Rowe with a shot blocked by Tima. And Frick dumps it out along the boards. Irvine with it there. Irvine cuts it down right into the chest of Jamie Swanner, who holds on. 23 seconds left of the penalty. Long lead for Frick. Frick and Rowe chase it down. Rowe dumps it in the Tampa Bay zone for Bohr. Outlet right side at midfield to Wegerly. 12 seconds in the penalty. Wegerly across the Canton red line. Feeds on the right to Walters. Walters spin move inside Condridge. Shot knocked away by Tima. Marsh was waiting there to punch it in, but Timmy with a heads up play to clear it out. And the penalty is over. Walt Schlothauer serving the penalty comes back out. Peter Rowe in the Canton zone down in the corner. And the ball knocked out to Wegerly. Wegerly right side. The ball taken away from Rowe. And uh, Tima clears, and Schlothauer dumps it down, but it's out of play into the aisleway in front of the stands. And 3.24 to play in the period. Timeout has been called. We will take this break with a score. The Canton Invaders 7 and the Tampa Bay Rowdies nothing. It's in 24 seconds to play in the third quarter, and the Canton Invaders are beaten up on the Tampa Bay Rowdies 7 to nothing. Wimster Beer with the ball at midfield for Tampa Bay, and that's ahead for Kareem Morabet. Left point to Irvine. Irvine trying to get inside Kia, chases him down in the corner. Wolfie loose, knocked away on a great play by Oscar Pisano, and eventually controlled by Jamie Swanner. Now they get the timeout called. <coughs> with 3.06 to play, Pisano just saved the shutout right there. Well, that ball was swung around the boards. It got underneath Jamie. It went through his legs, actually, and it was sitting on the goal line, and Oscar made a real heads-up play to clear it out. 3.07 to play in the third quarter. Canton has found the back of the net three times this period after leading 4-0 at halftime, and they're pounding up on the Tampa Bay Rowdies 7-0 right now, and it is really a pretty demoralized group right down here below us in the green uniforms. 19. But uh, I think you get the record for the latest goal ever in a game in that. I had it at 15.59 of the fourth period that actually ran 16 minutes on the clock in Louisville. Well, I, I told them to put an extra minute on the clock to try to let me get one because my family was there. Well, they did. But you, how'd you know you're going to need it at the start of the quarter is what I want to know. The funny thing about it was, Bob, there was, the organ player was up there, and they, there was a big space where he was above the goal, and there was a big pool if anybody put one up there that they would collect from the pool. So I had the option to put it in the goal or put it up there, and I decided to put it in. You would have looked kind of dumb missing the net by that much, wouldn't you? There's a shot just wide to the left by Solomon Hilton. Sanderson and Tima fight for it along the boards. Timmy scoops it ahead for Pikasinski, but Morabet stepped in there. Timmy with a poke to knock it away. It's up in the stage. Who touched it last? Uh, apparently, Tima did, and it'll be a kick in for Tampa Bay. With that timeout, we'll be interesting to see with the next line if some of the other players are coming on. I think maybe Costa score us. I take that back. It's a goal kick, Invaders. Go ahead. 
with the timeout. I think maybe Trevor might have made a few changes. We'll have to see with the next line. Maybe he's waiting until the fourth quarter, but it looks like Costa Scorus might be coming on next shift. Outlet, right side, Tima back to Swanner. Again, ahead to Tima. 2.26 to play in the third quarter. Pikasinski in the Tampa Bay zone. Back to the net right side on Irvine. Dumps it down in the corner. Pisano can't get there, and Solomon Hilton controls for Tampa Bay. And that's going to be intercepted by Kia as they try to get it back to Irvine. To Rudy, he shoots wide. Rebound comes out to the red line, and Sanderson comes the other way for Tampa Bay. Sanderson, ball deflected by Pikasinski. Sliding play by Kia to take it away. Dumps it back for Tima in the Canton zone. And Timmy, ball knocked away by Irvine. Hilton with a shot. Oh, what a save by Swanner. Jamie is as red hot as the shirt he's wearing right now. Vosmeyer dribbles ahead to Timo off his knee for Rudy. He tried to clear it out. Irvine got it back. Feeds on the right side to Morabet. Morabet, that's intercepted by Tima. And ahead uh, for Kia, it's beyond him. Sir has got it for Tampa Bay. Clears it on the left side to Irvine. A minute 36 to play in the period. Irvine, Rudy Pikasinski on him, drops it over to Paul Rowe. Rowe with Kia on D, sends it long. They want Walters in the left corner in the Canton zone. Walters back to the net on Pisano, clears it out to Irvine at midfield on the left side. Glenn puts it in the air for Marsh. Marsh right point, away from Bossmeyer, headed up in the air. Marsh with a weak shot, didn't have anything on that at all. And Tima clears that in the box for Swanner. Straight ahead, Vosmeyer midfield. Vosmeyer clears it to the right side for Rudy Pikasinski. Minute four to play in the quarter. Pikasinski for Vosmeyer, right point in the Tampa Bay defensive end. He heals it back to Pisano, back to Vosmeyer, and the ball knocked away by Paul Rowe. Rowe had trouble with that. Kia with the deflection. He clears it back to Vosmeyer. 50 seconds in the period. Rudy posted up. Crosses with Vosmeyer. Vosmeyer moves to his left. Inside one. Lost his balance as he moved around Wegerly. And Wegerly comes the other way for Tampa Bay. Across the midfield circle. Left side it comes to Walters. Walters in the Canton defensive end. 35 seconds in the period. Kia pokes the ball away. Pisano clears it off the boards. And the Invaders will have time for one more rush. 28 seconds in the period. Kia and Rudy. Two on two. Kia to Rudy. It's a little behind him, but Rudy's got it on the left side. Moves in around one to Kia. Kia looks for Rudy. He shoots. Good save by Bohr. Headed back to the left by Costa Scoris, who's just come into the game. Bohr dribbling around outside, but Pikasinski's going to get called for holding with 11 seconds to go in the period. Only the second foul of the period, one on each team, nine seconds. Paul Rowe clears ahead to Wegerly. Wegerly, right edge of the midfield circle, four seconds in the quarter. Across the red line on Paxos, he winds wide to the left, and that's the end of the third quarter. With a score, the Canton Invaders seven, and the Tampa Bay Rowdies nothing. They only have 11, 12 guys to go with, but I don't think many teams tonight were going to come in and beat the Canton team the way we played tonight. Whether it's been killing penalties on the power play, and the regular shifts. Just a fantastic job by everybody involved, especially Rudy and Kia. These guys have been all over the floor tonight. Not only has Rudy scored five points, but he's made six, seven steals on the defensive side. In the third quarter, Louisville and Toledo are tied up at three apiece. Kondrich drops it over to Paxos, back in the goal box for Swanner. We're underway in the fourth. Memphis has already beaten Milwaukee today, 7-2. Underway in the fourth quarter, Invaders comfortably on top, 7 to nothing. Costa Scores out there with uh, Steve Frick, Steve Maurer, Mike Paxos, and Tom Kondrich. Lead ball for Frick, that's headed away by Serbeer. Paxos dumps it back and hits Hilton in the knee, and he comes out with it. Ahead to Sanderson, left side, pushes it up for Irvine. Irvine on the run, shot, oh, and Swanner dives to his left to pull that one away. Lead ball for Frick, left side at midfield. He's got Maurer clearing to his right. He feeds for Maurer. Sanderson stepped in front and took it away. Serbeer clears to Irvine, back in the goal box for Bohr. Outlet right side to Morabet, and he taps it immediately to Serbeer. We've played 53 seconds of the fourth quarter. Serbeer, long lead into the corner. Sanderson, Swanner with the angle. Sanderson taps it in. He didn't have any angle on the shot, really. And Jamie controls that off the boards. Outlet to Key, left side at midfield. Quick pass back to Kondrich. Tomo on the run. Skouris cuts through the midfield circle. Right side, it comes to Paxos. Paxos and Skouris with it at midfield. Ahead to... Uh, Maurer, Maurer dishes back to uh, Kondrich. Tomo in the midfield circle. Ahead for Maurer in the corner. Maurer leaves it for Paxos. He shoots. Oh, and a good save by Bohr. He had two things in mind there. Get a hand on it. One to keep it from going in the net. And two to keep his face intact. That was a great play by Stevie Maurer. He got it off the boards. Gave a little back heel back to Mike. And Mike really let it fly. But it was a great save, like you said. 
13-32 to play in the game. The Invaders lead 7-0. It'll be a corner kick Canton from the right side. Tomo will trigger it in. Tomo. Outside to Paxos. He fires. They hit the inside of the crossbar. And it comes back out on the left point to Kia. That's as close as you can get without it being in. Bora Bor was looking at it, but that was it. Mike's taking target practice out there. Uh. Three or four <laughs> bullets he's hit there. He has one goal tonight already. He's got the ball ahead to Kondrich, right side at the red line. Kondrich, left side to Kia. Kia for Cor Skouris. Costa dishes the ball back. Here's Paxos. He winds wide to the left. And Peter Rowe, or Paul Rowe, clears. Marsh, bad pass taken away by Kondrich. Ahead to Kia. Kia in the right corner against Walters. He centers. Paxos scores! Well, Kia made a very fine pass down deep in the corner. We just talked about Mike Paxo and the shots that he's been taking. He made no mistake with that one. This time he kept it low. And Bohr didn't have a chance. His second goal of the night comes at the 2-10 mark of the fourth quarter. Kia has three assists to go with one goal, and the Invaders lead 8 to nothing. John Lignos in for the first time as an Invader with Pisano and Tima. Rudy and Kia, the forward line, I guess... Is Johnny going to play midfield, I suppose, or just three defenders? It looks like he'll probably play midfield. Uh, they ain't nothing lead. Who cares, right? <laughs> i tell you what, Bob. It's, whenever you're ahead, eight, seven, eight goals, it's, it's a great feeling. It's a great time to be out there playing. If he didn't have a shutout going, Swan would be up here at the red line taking shots right well, now. We, we still might see that. I don't know. <laughs> I think Billy's down there. He's, he wants to get on jersey on and go to forward. <laughs> he may let him do that before it's over. Pisano with the ball in the Canton zone on Hilton. Dumps it in the goal box for Swanner. 8-0 Canton. It's a blowout. 12.34 to play. Outlet to Tima. Taps it back to Swanner. He picks it up away from Sanderson. Pushes it up the left side for Tima. Tima and dumps it ahead. Knocked away by Irvine. Morabet dishes back to Glenn Irvine. Left side at midfield for Hilton. Hilton picked up by Pisano there. Drops it over to Serbeer. Serbeer in the air in the corner, and Murabet looking for the feet inside. Now drops it out to Hilton. Hilton thought about the shot, didn't take it. Out to Irvine, sweeps it out to midfield. And in the corner, Serbeer drops to Sanderson. Tima knocks that away. Irvine in a race. Serbeer heads it up in the air, but Kia will control that along the left side boards for Kent. 11.54 to go. Invaders 8, Tampa Bay nothing. Pikasinski with the ball left side at midfield. Back to Tima, ahead to Steve Frick. Frick on the run, dishes back to Lignos. Lignos, red line, moves in on Hilton, and Johnny backs it up at midfield to Tima. Lignos, now Tima, right side it comes to uh, Pisano, and Tima, and the ball headed away by Hilton. Hilton and Lignos in a race there, and Lignos dumps it back in the goal box on the two hops to Swanner. Lead ball for Frick at the Tampa Bay red line. Fricky working on Irvine there. They drop it inside, and it's knocked away. And coming the other way with it is Sanderson. Sanderson, right side it comes. Morabet with a shot, blocked by Pisano. And Pikasinski knocks that out to midfield. Paul Rose got it back. Alexander Gondardre of Ray Street, Baltic, Ohio, was the winner of the mini car tonight. So congratulations to Alexander. I don't know how old he is, but the young man's got himself the car to drive around. We didn't think we were ever going to give one of those away. Here comes Pisano out, midfield, ahead for Frick. He got behind his man off the wall. The pass is behind Maurer and cleared in by Peter Rowe. 10.42 to go in the game. 8-0 Canton. Steve Weggerly with Lignos on D at midfield. Drops it back to uh, Paul Rowe, doesn't take it. Rodney Marsh ends up with it for Tampa Bay. And the bad pass just sails into the crowd. I already did it. Oh, did you? I already did it, yeah. Ten and a half minutes left in the game. Canton eight, Tampa Bay nothing. Kondrich ahead to Paxos. Paxos, right side midfield for Costa Skouris. Ahead for Frick. Frick on the run up the right side. Peter Rowe in the corner. And Fricky back to the net trying to find some room to operate. Centers for Paxos looking for the hat trick. Shot scored by Frick. Steve Frick with a goal. Paxos will get the assist. It's nine nothing. Well, Mike Paxo almost had the hat trick there. It was a great save by Timmy Bohr. The ball came all the way out to the near boards, and Fricky was just in the right place at the right time. 
He shot it with the lead tonight, Bob. Time of the goal, 447. 15 goals for Frick. Paxos with three points on the night has his sixth assist of the season. And the Invaders lead it nine to nothing. Well, Timmy Bohr is going to be happy to get back to that warm weather. And I'm sure he's probably going to want to just lay on the beach for a couple days and forget this one. I think they play Tuesday. Not going to have long. Bohr had trouble there. Ball knocked away. Irvine and Kia fight for it. And Irvine clears it out. Right side at midfield to Sir Beer. Ten minutes left in the game. It's going to seem like 50 for if you're Tampa Bay. They clear it out to midfield to Sir Beer. Sir Beer puts it in the air. That's headed away by Paxos. And uh, it'll be out to midfield. And Sir Beer gets it back there. Sweeps it over on the left side to Irvine. Irvine in the air. Morabet can't control in the corner. Scores taps it ahead for Maurer. Maurer trying to get around Hilton. They fight for it along the board. Scores to double team. Costa comes away with the ball. Now Morabet there to help out. And it's cleared out to Kia. Kia ahead to Scores at midfield. He dishes back to Stevie Maurer. Maurer on the left side to Kondrich. Tomo back to Maurer. Maurer at the red line. Right side to Kia. 9-18 to go in the game. Kondrich backs it up at midfield. Paxos on the right side. Here is Scorus. Scorus on the point at the Tampa Bay red line. Costa moves middle of the floor, and Kondrich sweeps it back in the midfield circle for Paxos. Left side for Scorus. Inside Kia. Maurer. Ball knocked away by Sanderson. Kondrich took it away from Morabet at midfield. And here comes Paxos in for Canton. In the corner. Left side for Kia. Kia back to the net on Irvine. Out front. Scorus. Ball blocked by Hilton. Back at the point to Paxos. Right side to Kondrich. Kondrich wide fires and scores well Tom to right side the ball went off the backboards hit Timmy Bohr in the back trickled in behind him and there's the magic number 10 10 nothing for the invaders with 843 left in the game 617 the time of the goal for Tomo he has three points on the night with a goal and two assists and that's his ninth goal of the season I was curious if Coach Scorus got that assist we think Scorus. Scorus will get the assist, yes. Scorus with his first assist, his second point. Kondrich puts the Invaders up 10 to nothing. Walters has the ball knocked away. And Pikasinski has it. Ahead to Pisano. Pisano. And the ball knocked away by Walters, taken by Wegerly for Tampa Bay. They take him down in the right corner. Pisano on D. Lindos to double team, knocked the ball to Pikasinski. Rudy out across the red line, clears left side at midfield to Kira. Kia. Here we go again. Kia to the Tampa Bay red line. Now back out to midfield to Pisano. 8.08 left in the game. Lignos on the left point for Canton. Moves in, backs it out to Kia. Kia sweeps it away to Pisano. Pisano working against Wegerly. And ahead to Pikasinski, back to uh, Lignos. Lignos and Wegerly fight for it. And Lignos backs it up at midfield again to Pisano. 7.50 to go in the game. 10-0 Invaders. Tima left side to Pisano. And now Lignos. Lignos clears it ahead. It's behind Rudy. And Bora will chase that down and leave it there for Walters. Back in the goal box, he almost knocked it to Kia. And uh, coming out with it now is Wegerly for Tampa Bay. Wegerly clears to Marsh. That's knocked away by Tima up in the air. Marsh plows into Kia, but Pikasinski controls the ball. And Pikasinski leaves it for Tima. And now Pisano. Pisano around one, around two, ahead to Tima up the right side of the floor. Tima down in the corner. Wall feed through the box. Peter Rowe will try to clear that and does to Walters at the red line. Walters for Tampa Bay. On the left side, it comes to Paul Rowe. 7.05 left in the game. Rowe sends it way up in the air, and Swanner catches that one on the fly. Looked like Timmy got a little knock in the face there from Peter Rowe. He's a little bit unhappy there. Here comes John Lignos for the Invaders. Lignos on the run around Morabet. Ball squirts loose into the corner. Paul Rowe and Lignos fight for it there, and Lignos is going to get the trip as Rowe goes down. Rowe would like to have had the two-minute call, didn't get it. And the two brothers are letting the referee know about it. And now a blue card came out from the other side. Canton may have had too many men on the field. I couldn't tell what happened there. Um. What's that? I think it's delay a game. 
That might have been what it is. The invaders will go shorthanded. Lignos will serve the penalty. Let's see what they announce. Second power play opportunity for Tampa Bay. They failed on the first one. Time of the penalty, 8-17 of the fourth quarter. Going to take an official's time out here, I think, Bob. While they do that, we'll take a br brief break. Still. Um, don't know. Well, In any event, the Invaders will be a man down. We'll have to see if we can keep Jamie's shutout here. Six and a half, 6.43 actually to go, and it'd be nice to see him get the shutout. Yeah, he had one last year. 7-0 win over Chicago. Now, I noticed Jamie's on his own here. Is this kind of like a baseball pitcher where he's throwing the no-hitter? You don't go you don't and say anything, anything to him? Oh, no, you don't say anything to him. I mean, everybody can look up at that visitor side of the scoreboard and see those two zeros there. Man down team will try to do it again. They've killed one penalty tonight. The fun bunch, it'll be Tima, Kondrich, Frick, and Rudy. I was, just, I was just about to say, Bob, that's one thing we haven't done tonight is scored a shorthanded goal. Let's see if the fun bunch can't get one here. Okay, it'll be Marsh, Wegerly, Walters, Irvine, Peter Rowe on the power play team for Tampa Bay. Bob, do you think they'll try to pull their goalie? If they haven't done it by attack? now, <laughs> they haven't done it by now, there isn't any point. Frick knocked the ball away from Wegerly. It's taken back by Rowe at midfield. Ahead to Wegerly, dumps it to the corner. Walters centers. Ball blocked out front. Swanner pounces on the loose ball. A minute 44 left in the penalty. Jamie, long lead for Steve Frick. Frick trying to get inside Rowe. Rowe drags him down, and the foul is called. And the team fouls are now even at one apiece here in the fourth period. Frick will put the ball in play in the Tampa Bay zone. A minute 37 left in the penalty. Kondrich has it. Tomo moves inside on the man, and he will shoot him. Just missed it wide to the right. He burned Wegerly, and then fired it a little bit wide. Frick has it at midfield. Frick working on Irvine. Ball taken away. Here comes Marsh. Frick knocked it away from him, and Frick's going to get two minutes. Well, now they will go two men down, and that could really hurt when you're trying to preserve a shutout. Marsh comes up holding the right shoulder. I think we should give him an Academy Award for that one, Bob. He's he does a lot of that. He's done it in the past when we played him in Tampa. He's, if there's any physical contact at all, he's, he seems to go down. And I don't know whether his reputation, because of his preceding reputation, they give him the call. That might have been the case there. Could be. A minute 22 left in the first penalty. Time of this one will be 8.55. So the Invaders are now two men down. Is, is it coming off the what was the call on Frick? Tripping, Tripping is the is call on Frick. The They're so depleted as it is, you wouldn't want to see one more go guy go down. Actually, Solomon Hilton was limping around at halftime. He's out there again. So, boy, they really got a feel for these guys. They're they really are banged, banged up. up. Invaders lead 10 to nothing. 6.05 left in the game. The Invaders will now be two men down for a minute 22 left in the penalty on Lignos. And Frick has just gotten the two-minute tripping call. So if they want the shutout here, they're going to have to earn it. They will be two men down. It looks like Rodney's going to go to the locker room. He is holding that arm up. Maybe we can get a report a little bit later, see how he is. Yeah, Marsh is going to go out. He's hanging on to that left sho or right shoulder. Irvine dumps it over to Rowe. Right side to Wegerly. Wegerly down in the corner. Back outside to Wegerly. Rowe with a shot. Swanner with a save. Jamie, long lead. Oh, he threw it over everything. You're allowed the three-line violation when you're two men down. Off the chest it comes of uh, Bohr ahead. Row to Wegerly. 59 in the first penalty. Rudy with a deflection, but it comes out to Irvine. Now Row. Now Irvine. Minute 30 in the second penalty. 
5.32 in the game. Irvine left side. 46 seconds left in the first penalty. And here is Irvine in the corner. Centering ball knocked away by Kondrich. 38 seconds in the first penalty in the two-man advantage. Weggerly dishes outside to Irvine. 5.15 in the game. Shot blocked by Pikasinski. And Rudy tried to clear a whiff on it. Irvine dumps it on the left side to Weggerly. 24 seconds in the two-man advantage. Hilton ball knocked away. Swanner just grabbed that and holds on as Rudy blocked it. And Jamie able to hang on to that and pounce on it. 14 seconds left in the first penalty. Again, he throws it long. And that will stay in play down at the Tampa Bay end. Seven seconds in the first, 44 seconds in the second penalty. Up the floor comes Peter Rowe. Two seconds, one. The first penalty is over. Lignos is back out for the Invaders. Irvine with a shot. Swanner with a save. 32 seconds left in the second penalty for Tampa Bay. Swanner with a lead ball for Lignos. Lignos and Wegerly fight for it. Now Rowe to double team. And Wegerly will get whistled. No, they won't. Coming the other way, 19 seconds in the penalty. The Invaders trying to kill off two here. 4-19 in the game. 10-0, Canton with the lead, trying to preserve the shutout. Tampa Bay with a man advantage. We have 4-12 to play and only seven seconds in the penalty. Irvine left side, Pikasinski on him, and they'll dump it back, and that'll kill it off. We're going to get a timeout here, Bobby. are going to call a timeout, and they may pull the keeper now to try to get on the board. Only 4.04 left to play. We'll come back in just a moment. We're losing them at the wire, and it was nothing that a victory couldn't cure, and it seems to have done that here. That road trip was really the first time all season that I felt like last year. And it really did feel like last year, if you know what I mean, Artie. Well, you know, you want to be peaking going into the playoffs. It seemed like we were headed in the wrong direction. you got to give Trevor a lot of credit. He inserted some defensive-minded players. Since that time, three games, only six goals. So that's saying, that's saying something for the defense. We're back to five on five with 4.03 left in the game. And a 10-0 blowout for Camp. Borer will come out with it for Tampa Bay. Frick on him. He dumps it over to Irvine, left side. Irvine puts it in the air. Tima heads that back for Maurer. Maurer dishes back for Tom Kondrich. 3.43 left to play. Tima ahead to Frick. Left edge of the midfield circle. Crosses and gives the ball to Maurer. Maurer backs it up for Tim Tima. Tima ahead to Maurer and again back to Tima. Three and a half minutes to go. Tima forward for Lignos. Lignos with Irvine shoots, saved by Bohr. And he holds on to that one up against the left post. Short out and on the left side to Irvine. 3.19 to go. Irvine pushes the ball ahead for Sanderson. Sanderson on Kondrich. And Derek spins and loses the ball to Steve Maurer. And now John Lignos. Lignos gets around Sanderson ahead to Kondrich. And back to Tima and ahead to Lignos. Three minutes to go. Lignos ahead for Maurer. Maurer off his heel. Back to Lignos. Lignos for Maurer. Maurer taps it inside. Knocked wide to the right. Kondrich trying to get inside of Morabed. Lignos has it back at the red line now. Right side to Tomo. 2.47 in the game. Kondrich clears the ball back to Tima. Tima up in the air. And that one's in the stage. Goal kick Tampa Bay with 2.39 to go. 10-0. We kind of had an inkling. We knew Tampa Bay was a little riddled up coming in, and the way things were going, this could get out of hand in a hurry, and that's exactly what happened. Tampa Bay has clinched a playoff spot, and maybe it's a good thing. You asked before, Bob, you said, do you think the invaders will show any mercy if they get up a couple goals? I think your question's been answered. Yeah. Although I gotta wonder, if, if they didn't have the shutout to worry about, they might even be going at him worse. They wanna get the shutout for Jamie right now. I don't think we're worrying about goal 11 or 12 at this point. Ball sent up in the air, off the glass. Hilton couldn't get it. Here comes Maurer the other way. Invaders on the counterattack, 217 in the game, ahead to Frick. Steve Frick drops it back for Kondrich. Kondrich back to Tima. This is kind of a payback for a couple of those nights in Tampa Bay, too, where it seemed like nothing could go our way. But tonight it sure has. Two minutes left in the game. 
Condrich ahead, Lignos on the right side. Lignos looking in, and the ball knocked away, but Lignos got it back. Lignos continuing to dribble out of a double team, and he got the handball on John. And loose out front, Maurer had it knocked away by Bohr. And I don't think anybody realized that the thing hadn't been put in play yet. A couple of the Tampa players were busy arguing with the referee. Stevie Maurer had it right in front of the goal. Luckily for the Rowdies, Tim Bohr was there to make the save. He's got to feel very deserted in that goal. Minute 48 left to go in the game. Just got a note in here, Bob. In the fourth quarter, Louisville's up on Toledo 5-3. to three. Things are really tight there for that last playoff spot. This would really put Louisville in the catbird seat in the south, though. This will put them up by four games. There's a shot, kick, save, followed by Maurer, no. Maurer knocked away and is put up in the stage by Lignos. It'll be a goal kick for Tampa Bay with a minute 42 separating Jamie Swanner from his second career shutout in the AISA. Talk about some of those playoff teams, uh, actually the teams that are going for that last playoff spot. Boy, Toledo's been playing some great ball lately. The, you know, Fort Wayne has a chance to get in there and it's really going to be interesting to see what happens these last four or five games of the season. Milwaukee ever learns how to score. They've got a shot at it, too. Bohr with the ball in the goal box. like to see J.D. do well as a coach there in Milwaukee, but I don't know if he has the horses to pull the wagon right now. Ball at midfield, knocked away, up in the air, off the head of uh, Wegerly, and it goes out of play. 126 to play. The Invaders will put it in play. Touchline left side at midfield, and Canton leading 10 to nothing. Three goals, two assists for Rudy Pikasinski tonight. 4.9 for Kia with a goal and three assists. Mike Paxos has two goals and an assist tonight. Condrich with a goal and two assists. Tampa Bay clears it out of the zone. Tima heads it away from Wegerly. Walters gets it back to Hilton. Ahead to Wegerly. Wegerly knocks it back around Skouras. A minute 11 to go. Wegerly moves in on Tima. Shot blocked by Timmy up in the air. Maurer heads it free. And here comes Tima. Tima clears it ahead for Scorus. Scorus up the left side of the floor against Peter Rowe. Maurer and Paul Rowe really going out. And Paul Rowe's just going out there trying to nail whoever he can hit. Well, he's picking on the wrong guy there, Bob. He doesn't want to pick seconds. on Stevie Maurer. Sure doesn't. Scorus with a shot over the glass and out of play. They with 46 seconds to go. Paul Rowe and Stevie Maurer, boy, they've, they've got a game of their own going on. There's about four or five shots each one hit the other one with, but Stevie's got about 20... Uh, probably 30 or 40 pounds on uh, on uh, Paul. Those are the things that happen in 10 nothing games yeah. at the end. 47 to play. Canton 10, Tampa Bay nothing. This would be Swanner's second career shutout if they can keep the ball out of the net for 47 more seconds. He had one in a 7 nothing victory over Chicago last year. Is that our third shutout of uh, the history of our team? Yeah, because Barbaric had won the first year against Louisville. 5-0. Five five nothing. Nothing. Swanner would become the second goalie. Well, this, is this the largest margin of victory? I don't think so. I don't think so. I know it's not if you count the playoffs. I know it's not if you count the playoffs. I'm not sure about the regular season. 37 seconds left to go. Bohr with the ball sends it ahead midfield for Hilton. Tampa Bay will try once again. Hilton along the right side. Ball knocked away. And Hilton came crashing into the boards. He's just sitting there talking to the ref. And back to Irvine. 20 seconds to go. Sir Beer pushes it ahead for more. But back to Irvine. Irvine has trouble with that bouncing ball. 12 seconds left in the game, and it's still at midfield. Hilton double-teamed by Scorus and Maurer. And you've got a whistle and a holding call against Scorus. We'll put it back for Tampa. Just seven seconds left in the game. And the ball's at midfield. Swanner, seven seconds away from his second career shutout. They dump it back to Bohr. Five seconds. Bohr puts it in the air. Three, two. Tima clears it out. The game is over. Jamie Swanner with a shutout, and the Invaders win it 10 to nothing.